Hey everybody, wanted to go ahead and make a quick video here on the first steps on being able to grow your own plants indoors. So the first thing you're going to want to figure out is what are your goals? Are, is it just for you? Is it for you and somebody else in your household? Are there other people in your family? Maybe you are trying to take care of. So the first step, once you know what you are trying to accomplish is going to be a location. You got to figure out a place to do this. Now, I myself, I have a, a neighborhood that there are lots and lots of kids that play outside. So I, I do not grow outside. So all of my experience has been indoors with my personal plants. So once you get your space located, whether it be in a closet, uh, a cardboard box, uh, beside your bed, uh, you don't need to go out and buy all these big fancy grow rooms and, and all this equipment that you kind of see when you go on Amazon. It's a little overwhelming. You know, you see prices, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars $900, and it's too much. You're like, I'll just keep going to my local local dispensary or your local plug, whatever the situation is. I'm here to tell you it is significantly easier than you think. So the first thing you got to do, get your game plan in place, figure out where you're going to do it. Your number one most important investment is actually going to be your light. Now what you're seeing, these are some old what blurple style lights where they're very heavy in the blue and very heavy in the red spectrum. Uh, in the early, late 2000s, th this was pretty much all we had to use. Um, you know, then there were slightly upgraded versions where they did start adding in a little bit of white. That's what you are seeing on the screen right now. Uh, nowadays, uh, it's almost embarrassing. A lot of people would be embarrassed to be caught with purple lights with all the new quantum board style, board style, bar style lights, uh, which are fa fantastic. Uh, I am currently running a Mars Hydro bar style light. It's amazing. Uh, however, I've been doing this for years. And what you see before you is everything I've used up until this point. Now, my personal goal was only for myself. I was not trying to grow you know, 10, 11, 12 plants and max out my plant count. I was just growing for myself. I think the most these two lights were capable of doing, I think I've stretched out about five decent plants out of these. And I say decent, that's, that's for what I needed. Again, it's for me. Um, once you do a couple, couple cycles of runs, you start running into, you find you have plenty, you have plenty, and then you can start being picky. Um, so the number one thing is going to be your light, you know, and, and I'm telling you don't need a, a four five, six plus hundred dollar light. You know, there, there are plenty, plenty of lights out there for 150, 200 bucks. You know, if, and I understand 200 bucks is quite a bit, you know, eBay would be a fantastic idea. Get it, get a used version. What I'm getting at, it, there's so many options, you know, the blurple lights can grow some fantastic flowers that, that you don't necessarily have to get the latest and greatest. The, these are, have worked for years. There's still many people that use them. Here's a little uh, capture of my newest light, what I've upgraded to, everything I'm doing. My current run, I'm currently running all autos right now. My first time doing all autos. Have it at about 60%. It's very nice on the newer ones. You can adjust the power level, the brightness kind of go hand in hand. Uh, whereas like the older ones that we were looking at are just on and off. Uh, but regardless, they both will grow some amazing, amazing things. Uh, little sneak peek of my room. 
But regardless, so your number one investment, number one investment is going to be your light. You get your light, get a light, you know, soil is going to be important. There's lots of other little things, but your number one is going to be your light. As you see, I personally just use the uh, orange buckets. So once you get your light and, and you get some uh, seeds, whether those be from a uh, uh, online store or locally sourced, as we say, bag seed, uh, a couple things you're going to need. Obviously, you know, a lot of people like to use the paper towel method. Um, fantastic. Personally, if you're going to do that way, coffee filters are the way to go. Coffee filters, the taproot will not, tends not to stick into it. Personally, I just do it in shot glasses. I just soak them in water with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. But so as you see on your left are just some peat moss cups and then a red solo cup. I think everybody can get their hands on a red solo cup with no problem. So obviously at this point, you're, there's, there's different size buckets you'll, you'll see people growing with. Uh, I believe these are three and five gallon. Uh, I could be wrong on that. I do believe that is what they are. Uh, that's probably about the most you're going to need. There's a little solo cup for reference, so I'm sure people can correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, that's that's probably the most, the most you would need. Um, there are some other options past that. You'll see some fabric uh, buckets as well. It, it, now that's going to depend on where you are. Uh, I personally, I'm in Arizona. It is so dry out here. The fabric pots I tend to have lots of problems with, so I kind I like sticking to my plastic pots. Uh, just make sure if you get the plastic pots, you you drill some extra extra drainage holes. Yeah, so here we go with the fabric pots. See that one? I there I know they're gross. I pulled these out of storage just to kind of give reference. It, it's more than you need. You'll you'll see plenty of pictures on Instagram and whatnot social media and youtube people growing in these huge buckets it's amazing it is amazing it's more than you need especially getting started when you're getting started you're only going to want one or two plants as far as soil goes uh, that will definitely cover in another video but as a reference definitely you're going to want to stay away from the miracle grows you're going to want to stay away from a lot of your big box soils. I'm sure you guys can find some sort of small local grow store or some sort of local botanical supply place that will have good soil. Ocean Forest, uh, all of the, the Fox Farm line is very good. For starters, you'll want to get into the happy frog. Happy frog's very low on nutrients, won't burn your seeds. They, they love it very much. But as far as soil goes, we'll definitely get into that and do a different video. This is my personal buckets. I use, as I showed, just the big orange buckets. I drill some extra holes in the bottom and label all of them. Little, little blinding view from the light but yeah guys it's very easy guys and gals it's very easy to go ahead and get started i strongly suggest do some homework get yourself a light it's your most important investment so stay tuned follow us on the next video watch how we grow